Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is your body killed cancer five minutes ago. What's your cause? Cause that in a nutshell. Yep. Uh, another video on basically your, I guess, in your immune system. Yeah, this is immune system series that he's been doing. Like, I don't know, past two years or so. He's made a lot of videos. It's always fun. So yeah, this is kind of like a big one, right? The word cancer. Uh, anytime people hear this, uh, you know, there's a panic. It's silent panic in their head, depending on the person. Everybody is afraid of cancer, obviously. It's random. It can affect anyone. Uh, there is a sign of anything. Obviously, you can uh, try certain things to try to prevent it, but you can never know. Healthiest person can also get it because that's the point, right? Uh, as far as I know, the basic thing I can think of that uh, cancer comes when a cell refuses to die or something, right? And I don't think <laughs> it's, it's not based on will, like I don't want to die or something like that. I guess it's just, you know, something fails in the mechanism, I don't know. So when a cell refuses to die, it goes rogue in a way, and then it does what cell does: try to, I guess, multiply, try to stay alive. It knows the system, goes into the root of things. You know, basically, just drop blood and just try to stay alive, even if it means killing the next cell. Right? Try to survive, basically. Yeah. So obviously, it's very complicated than that, but that's the basic version, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure I saw that on a Kazgazad video. I don't know, but yeah, let's watch this one. This is gonna be fun. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react to more. I love science, anything scientific related. So you know, I try to react to any Kaskazad video on the same day because why would I watch anything else if there's a Kaskazad video? So yeah, let's watch it. Somewhere in your body, your immune system just quietly killed one of your own cells, stopping it from becoming cancer and saving your life. It does that all the time. The vast majority of cancer cells you develop will be killed without you ever noticing, which is an incredibly hard job because of what cancer cells are. Parts of yourself that start to behave as individuals even if it hurts you. What is cancer and how does your body kill it all the time? Wait a minute, yeah. That animation right there, trying to show it all evil. I know because just tries to make it, you know, more fun with animations. But this makes this makes me remember, you know. Uh, people try to, you know, give all these feelings to this, right? Uh, to cells, basically cancer cells and things like that. Like, all you want to s survive. What would you do in that place, this and that? It's not sentient, man. It's a cell, right? Some mechanism failed, it didn't die, and now it's trying to survive, basically. That's what cell does. That's what it's... That, that's what it all does, right? Try to multiply that to survive. Trying to give it emotions and feelings. That always cracks me up. Like, it's not a sentient being or something. It's a cell. Come on. Cancer is when corrupted cells multiply uncontrollably. It can emerge from basically every type of cell in your body. So there's not just a single type of cancer, but hundreds. Some grow slowly, others are aggressive, some can be treated effectively, others are deadly. In a sense, a cell that becomes cancer turns into something ancient and something new. Over billions of years, evolution has molded cells to survive and thrive in a hostile environment, fighting for space and resources. Until a new and exciting way of life emerged, cooperation, a division of labor that allowed cells to specialize and become more successful together. But cooperation requires sacrifices. For a multicellular being to stay healthy, the well-being of the collective has to matter more than the survival of the individual cell. Cancer cells stop being part of the collective and become individuals again. Your body can handle a few rogue cells, but some cancer cells divide again and again, becoming a sort of new organism within you, taking resources you need to survive, competing for the space you inhabit, destroying the organs they were part of in the process. Despite the harm they cause, cancer cells are not evil. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want anything. Cells are protein robots that just follow their programming, which yeah. unfortunately has been corrupted. The soul of the cell. In a nutshell, your cells have a nucleus filled with DNA. It consists of genes, instructions for how to build proteins and when to make each one. These building instructions are copied and transferred to ribosomes where they're used to make proteins. What kind of proteins your cells make determine what they can do. The important thing here is that a corrupt gene means you get a corrupt protein, which we'll get important later. Mm. Your DNA gets a tiny bit corrupted, 
it mutates tens of thousands of times each day. Most of the time without any special cause, just by being alive. Almost all of these mutations are fixed very quickly or are not problematic. Mm. Still, over time, as your cells make copies of themselves, damage is accumulating. Imagine having okay. to make copies from copies from copies for decades. Maybe one day a hair got on the scanner or a corner got frayed. <laughs> Each new mistake becomes part of the new copies and all the copies that follow. You can increase DNA damage by doing things like smoking, drinking alcohol. Yeah, that is a bit panicky thought, isn't it? <laughs> it's just copies of copies. So obviously, there's going to be some damage here and there. Now the next copy is bad. The next copy is bad. Slowly just accumulates. So that gives you this panicky feeling of the damage is permanent. Like something happens, it damages your DNA, you damage your cell, and basically you just, you know, this. Now in my head, there's going to be panic thought, right? Like now damage something, you know, permanent. It just started this chain effect. The next copy after that, after that, it's just going to be bad, bad, and bad. So that's why you, I, I don't know, that's, I think that's why you hear of people when somebody got a cancer. They survive from that or recover from that. Now they have more likelihood of getting another cancer because of that, right? That, that must be the case. By being obese, breathing in asbestos, by not using sunscreen or contracting a virus like HPV. But the simplest way to damage DNA and get cancer is to be alive long enough. For many cancer cases, there is no cause other than bad luck. See, that's the random factor is the most panicky thing for people, right? That's why in, in Google search or wherever, the biggest question people ask about health probably is, is it a cancer, right? That's always like they have some kind of a spot on this, you know, on skin somewhere. Is it a cancer? Because also the characteristics, like cancer can appear anywhere. Anything can have cancer, obviously. Cells, cells basically becomes cancerous. So your body is everything in your body is made of cells. So it can be anywhere, right? So people panic about all the time, like, you know, uh, if you have cancer certain part doesn't necessarily mean it hurts or doesn't hurt it might hurt it might not hurt things are so vague and you know basically because it's how it is right like sometime it might hurt sometime it might not hurt sometimes you don't even know if you have cancer until it's too late there are lots of cancers also like that that's why people panic all the time and basic thermal rule is like you know at certain points you should uh, you know get uh, you know regular health checkups or whatever right which i don't know most people do or not but, it, you know, that's the thing about cancer. People panic a lot. It's not like immediate. Some of the cancer just go under the radar until it's too late. That's the panicky thing. Damage that leads to cancer. We are simplifying, but roughly there are three categories of genes that need to be corrupted so cancer can arise. The first key mutation is in the appropriately named tumor suppressor genes, or TSGs. Mm. These genes are a bunch of things. In the name. For one, they produce control mechanisms that continuously scan your DNA for mistakes and copying errors and fix them right away. And then they keep normal cells from multiplying recklessly. If TSGs become damaged, your cells basically forget how to repair themselves and can reproduce unchecked. The second crucial mutation can happen in your oncogenes. When oncogenes are turned on, the cell is told to multiply rapidly. They were super active when you were inside your mother's womb. To turn a single original cell into trillions in months, it needs to divide and grow rapidly. These rapid growth genes are turned off when there's enough of you. When your oncogenes get corrupted, they basically turn on again. The third crucial mutation is in your cell's suicide switch. Mm. Most cells are constantly recycled and refreshed. When cells amass too much damage, they usually notice, and special genes trigger a controlled suicide called apoptosis. If the genes that control this process get damaged, cells are free to live on despite being dangerously corrupted. So, if a cell becomes unable to fix the mistakes in its genetic code, loses the ability to destroy itself when it notices the damage, and begins to grow rapidly without restraint, it turns into a young cancer cell. These cells have to be killed as quickly as possible. While they are bad at this stage, they are still pretty weak and easy to kill. But if they continue to mutate and increase in number they can learn to avoid your defenses and become a real threat yeah see that's the, okay first of all those three parts of the dna that he talked about that that's what i meant by mechanism failing at the start of the video like the, if those mechanism fails you know it can grow right so it doesn't have will 
to just you know become this kind of a cancerous and you know that if those mechanism fails and then it grows then it becomes a problem but you hear basically in you know lots of places where is that a tumor you know has it become cancerous and then people panic i guess this is what they mean right that it has grown at a level that it, it tries to evade the system, it tries to, you know, suck in energy from healthy cells around and try to survive now, actively trying to survive as its own being. I guess that's what they mean by, is it turned cancerous and then they panic, too or something. I'm pretty sure that, that, that is the case, right? Because now it will try to hide, it will try to do everything to survive, and then it becomes a problem. At any moment of your life, your immune system is hunting these cells. But how do you identify and kill corrupted cells yeah. that seem indistinguishable you. from healthy ones? <laughs> how to find cancer? That's the problem. Well, here we come back to the proteins your cells produce and the story they tell. So if, for example, your oncogenes switch back on, they make oncogene proteins. Your immune system knows that they should not be present if you're an adult. So to know which cells are corrupt and which are healthy, your immune system needs to know what proteins they're making inside. To solve this, evolution came up with MHC class 1 molecules, a sort of display window that makes cells transparent. Cells constantly take little samples of the proteins they make and put them into thousands of these MHC molecules to showcase what they're doing. The selection is constantly refreshed, always giving an up-to-date picture. There's so, <laughs> basically it has supervision, right? Show me what you're doing. Show me your work, right? Okay, so that is so good. I mean, f first time, you know, I had this thought like cancers are too untouchable because of that. Like it's among you. It's one of your cells. It's like, you know, you know how you hear in those movies like, you know, one of your own agent is a traitor. How do you find it? Like, you know, that kind of thing. It's one of your cells. How do you know it's cancerous? It looks indistinguishable from, you know, healthy cell basically. But basically from the activity and like this, like, you know, this supervision element of it, like, you know, the immune system can check what you're doing, what you're not doing. There's a whole library of proteins that are highly dangerous and should not be made by healthy cells, and your immune system has them all on file. It has billions of specialized cells called T-cells mm. made to recognize specific proteins. If a T cell sees a forbidden protein in an MHC display window, it knows that the cell is corrupted and kills it immediately. But there's a flaw in this system. What if a cancer cell mutates and finds a way to circumvent this process? All it needs to do is to stop making MHC class 1 molecules and boom, it's invisible. <laughs> Without display windows, the immune system is blind and can't identify cancer anymore. Fortunately, evolution found an ingenious solution, the natural killer cell, a judge, jury, and executioner, yeah. the killer. At this very second, hundreds of millions of natural killer cells are patrolling your body, looking for cells that have already turned into cancer or are corrupted by a virus. Natural killer cells go from cell to cell to check for one thing. Does a cell have MHC class one molecules? Does it have a display window and is it doing its duty of showing off what's going on inside itself? This is so amazing because it covers all of your bases. While T cells look for the present. <laughs> so let me get this straight. There's like a, this window element to it that can check if, if you know what is it doing or not. Cancer cells like, you know what, I'm going to hide my face like this. <laughs> and there are things like, why are you doing this? And just basically kills you. That's what's happening here. <laughs> why doesn't it have this window? Kill it, it's cancerous of the unexpected, something that should not be here, natural killer cells look for the absence of the expected, the absence of something that should be here. The yeah. logic is, if a cell does not have display the windows, it awesome. wants to hide something. And a cell that hides something must be killed. Mm. What makes the natural killer cell even more metal is that it's always in murder mode. It patrols your body, checking cell after cell with the intention of killing it. Your healthy cells have to convince it that they should not die today. And a way to do that is to have MHC class 1 molecules. So, in summary, almost all young cancer cells you will ever develop in your life will be killed by your immune system. Okay, but if your body is this prepared, why mm. do we still get cancer? Well, sometimes cancer cells mutate more and get much better at fighting back. Cancer is a story of an arms race. An arms race that we will win eventually, maybe with the help of natural killer cells. Right now, 
a number of therapies are beginning to show amazing promise, from cancer-fighting vaccines to engineered T-cells and even natural killer cells. We'll look at these therapies in future videos. So the war is not won yet, but we are on to cancer, and eventually it will be eliminated once and for all. Maybe sooner than we think. Well, this this video was made possible in part by direct viewer support and in part through a grant by Gates Ventures. Thanks a lot for their support. And stay tuned for part two. Please check out our source document for more background and in-depth information. Yeah. I, I like that there's going to be part two where they, they'll go in detail. But yeah, I guess this, uh, you know, like you said, the will, will win eventually against fight against cancer depending how strong cancer has become but it's like i think pneumonia right there are lots of cases of pneumonia where it's become too much pneumonia pneumonia has gotten to you too much and now your immune system uh, you know hurts you in the collateral and it just hurts you at a level that it's you know you're done basically that's what happened with the cancer too lots of time you I, I think right i don't know about this but i think when lots of time doctor says like it's so you know it's grown too much and that we can't do anything about it. It's not like your immune system won't kill it or it won't identify it. It will kill it, but in process, will probably damage you at a level that you won't be recoverable. I think that's probably what's happening. But yeah, I like that he's going to make another part of it because this is the, you know, curious one, right? Cancer is the word where people like, okay, I want to know about all the other things, but this is the one thing I need to know about because this is like a big famous one. You know, there are so many incurable diseases, obviously, right which people probably don't even know about people just lots of people just have in their mind like cancer is the only thing that's too effed up who will kill you like that and maybe in a random factor like anyone can get it maybe sure that, that's the case but yeah at least some people can't recover from cancer there are lots of incurable diseases that once you get it you're done there is no cure for it there is no recovery for it. your immune system can't do anything about it i don't know if course that made videos about that or not right but it would be interesting to see that but yeah Alright, well, uh, that was your body killed cancer five minutes ago. Watch channel because in a nutshell. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.